I was going through a Dawes period and indulging in too much drinking and unhealthy ways of living. I was diagnosed with a clinical depression after a substantial amount of time off due to a herniated disc, and I was ordered to quit drinking and start exercising, which I failed at. In Jim Morrison's spirit, I flew out to Venice Beach to ride and breathe the California air of past times and alcohol-infused summer nights. What I found was quite the opposite. I found dread and despair, a wicked loneliness that only furthered my intake of substances. I couldn't focus, and inspiration was fleeting, or mostly absent. A gloomy restlessness had possessed me and wouldn't let go. Sharon came by the hotel a few times to talk about the new album and listen to a few small ideas I had brought with me, but we weren't able to you know, get a true sense of what the album was going to be like. Not at all. After four days of boredom, I hailed a cab for the excitement of Hollywood. I ended up spending the next four days in a benzo trance, soaking up the real life of people who have since disappeared out of my life. Many times you want this going around? No, we'll figure that out. Yeah, no, we don't have to borrow that, that now. That's fine. Probably a hundred times. <laughs> I think it's cool. Isn't it? I love it. I think it's great. Back in New York, I was faced with the daunting task of completing an album in record time before I once again had to go west to the legendary Sunset Studio, where the Doors recorded their best work, where the genius of Brian Wilson, the Stones, etc., can be heard in the corridors late at night where the dark echo chambers whisper songs of years past. In seven days, we completed what had begun as a complete nightmare. Night songs of doomed love and death of all things beautiful. It can be seen as a voyeuristic journey, a longing for the unknown. It's the fastest album we've ever done, that's for sure. It literally took just a few weeks. And we opted for a very different guitar sound on this record, a fuller, denser, more complicated sound. A swirling inferno of layers of hopelessness. It's bleak and it's sad. It's a nostalgic glorification of unrequited love. A lost romance is a never acquired closeness. It's like a dream scenario in hell. It's the first time we used the piano, which is heavily featured on songs like Observations, You Hit Me, I'm Down, and Young and Cold. It's a very raw addition to our sound. There's still that certain distinct ravenette sound that nobody can take away from us. It's because we aim to please ourselves, and we have to make sure we write the best songs for that special moment in time. A good song is what we strive for. How that song is performed or laid out is whatever happens in the moment. We believe in spontaneity, and whatever comes first must be right. There's a bunch of little mistakes and imperfections, but that's what makes it real and soulful. We don't encourage repetition in any way. We don't overthink it either. We just go, go, and go. Why do some people expect the same album from you time and time again? I don't know. The beauty of songwriting is that inspiration creeps up on you when you least expect it. And sometimes, small and significant encounters can turn into something quite exceptional and extremely beautiful. 